Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new in today's video I'm going to do my London Marathon training update for week 5 There's no run vlog this week unfortunately uh, It was a very short week and I just didn't have the time to film the run vlog But I'm going to recap the, the, the week last week anyway so you know what's going on uh, so I'm going to be recapping the week as a whole, recapping the individual runs that I did and how they went and then if there's anything else along the way that I feel like I need to mention then I will mention it as well. Uh, so how did week 5 go of training? Uh, pretty shoddy actually. Uh, I only managed two runs out of the four that I had on plan. Obviously for those that live in the UK you will know that we had a heatwave uh, and it was pretty extreme temperatures on Monday and Tuesday last week. So I sort of took a break from running on those days and a couple of days afterwards because it was just far too warm for me. I know that I don't bode well with the heat anyway. I am adjusting very slowly but I'm still not quite there in terms of running in the heat and and doing very well in it uh, so yeah I took a couple of days off then um, and then I was intending to get back on it like Wednesday Thursday but I just wasn't feeling it at all I think my body was sort of catching up with me obviously prior to doing London Marathon training I was uh, only doing like two three runs a week and it wasn't very consistent um, so now that I'm doing four runs a week, I do think that it's like slowly caught up on me and I've just been really tired uh, lately so I think it was just my body's way of telling me that I needed a, a bit of extra rest. So the first run that I did last week was on a Friday and then I did my long run as well. So I did uh, a shorter run on the Friday and then a long run on the Sunday. So I guess we'll get into sort of recapping those runs and how they went. As always, I'll leave a Strava screenshot here so you can see it. So on uh, Friday, I did four miles. I'm just bringing it up on Strava so that you can see it. So I did four miles in a pace of 12.51 and a time of 51.28. Uh, I don't remember that much from this, this run other than the fact that I am still con uh, con consistently getting in the continuous runs without having to stop. So that's good. Um, I did think that at some point that that might have been a fluke and that I'd sort of returned to sort of the run walk method but yeah it's been going really well so far with that so I did four miles continuous for that run uh, the only other real exciting thing to mention for that run was that I finally received my charity vest as you will know because I've mentioned it many times I'm running the London Marathon for Crohn's and colitis my dad has Crohn's disease so I'm very proud to be running for Crohn's and colitis uh, so I got the charity vest I did get two of them so it's got Crohn's and colitis on the front it's a nice purple color I like purple it's my favorite color so uh, I'm very happy to be running in purple and then on the back it just says it takes guts and then uh, to live with Crohn's and colitis but that is what the vest looks like uh, it is from Shimatar, so it's quite a good quality vest, which I'm pretty happy with. So I, don't, I won't, I won't have any problem with wearing it on race, race day. Um, obviously, my plan is to wear the charity vest for race day. However, I think that I am going to be wearing my hydration vest for the race. At least that's what I'm thinking right now. So it will probably cover most of the writing, which is a bit disappointing. Uh, I might be able to get like my name put under the vest on the back or something I'm not too sure because I know that a lot of people say to sort of get your name printed on your vest so that you can have people shout and cheer you during the uh, race which I think will come in handy a lot for me uh, so I think that's what I'm going to do with the vest so I'll sort that out at some point uh, but yeah, other than that, I don't really have anything else um, groundbreaking to really say about that run. So I guess we'll move on to my long run. I will recap how the long run went first because I do have a long sort of story to recap for this. So on Sunday, I did 14 miles in a pace of 14.43 and a time of 3 hours and 26 minutes. Uh, that's quite a long time for me, longer than I expected to be out for. Uh, this run just was bad from start to finish, basically. Um, I sort of explained it on my Instagram as the wheels completely coming off for this run. Uh, I ha I've mentioned on my training updates before that I've been having issues, or I've had issues with uh, the toilet. 
and needing to go to the toilet during runs, which for the most part has been sorted by the Emodium. I'd been to the toilet before I went out running. I don't want to get too, um, too TMI about this, but I felt like I hadn't fully emptied myself. That's all I'm going to say about it. Um, so I... I sort of had it in the back of my mind that I might need the toilet as I start running. So my plan was initially to do a shorter loop close to the house so that if I started running and then it sort of brought on me needing the toilet, I could dip back in the house and then continue on with my long run afterwards. So I think I'd got to, uh, well, initially when I started running, my legs just weren't having it at all and uh, that was a really bad sign and I think because my legs were so heavy so early on in in the run i sort of almost checked myself out which is not good because obviously i don't if my legs are heavy when i start london marathon i can't check myself that out that early so i do need to sort of get in the right headspace for that um but yeah they felt really really heavy from the off and they didn't really warm up uh for the entire run um as I was saying, I did a shorter loop initially, so I think I got to about 3.5 miles and I was still fairly close to the house. I decided to do like an extra loop on top of that because I didn't need the toilet at the time when I'd done the smaller loop. Uh, so I dipped back to the house at 3.5 because my stomach was sort of giving me the signs that I potentially need the toilet. So I came back to the house and went to the toilet and nothing happened. Uh, it was just a sort of false alarm with my stomach. So I had to scramble to try and pull my sweaty shorts back on, which if anyone's sort of been back to the house to go to the toilet and you've got sweaty kit, it is really hard to get back on. So that sort of frustrated me right from the off. Um, so I went back out uh, to continue on with my long run. Uh, things went fairly smoothly uh, for the next couple of miles. I think I got to about eight and a half, nine miles before my stomach started going again and I thought, okay, right, maybe this is the time that my uh, I'm going to need the toilet. So I prayed that the local uh, public toilets in Stanford were open. Luckily they were. Uh, it was fairly early at that point so it was lucky that they were open on a Sunday that early um, and again I didn't need the toilet when I went in there so it was sort of a struggle to put back on my shorts and I just thought if I'm going to have issues like my, my stomach having issues then I'm just going to sort of continue until the point where I potentially need to stop for that reason rather than just quickly checking sort of thing not to waste time obviously I'd already wasted quite a lot of time it was getting hotter uh, it was due to be 30 degrees on the Sunday so it was getting hotter and hotter the more I sort of delayed it and went to the toilet and things like that so I was out quite a long time um, and I think after I'd stopped the second time my legs just gave up almost Every time that I sort of stop to walk during a run, I feel like it's really hard to get going again. And it was even harder the sort of second time round to get my legs moving. Um, and by, I'd say like 11, 12 miles, I was really, really struggling. I mean, for the, for the last four miles, I was really struggling. Um, but the heat got a bit too much after about 11, 12 miles. So I was walking quite a bit of the run. And I just sort of wanted to get finished. I stayed uh, close to sort of Stanford Town Centre because the idea was that I was going to finish my long run in town and then I'd get some sort of refreshment while I was in town, like an iced coffee or whatever, just to sort of replenish myself and then just have like a cool down walk on the way back. Um, but yeah, overall, I did finish the 14 miles, but it was very eventful. Um, there was a lot of walking. It was a far cry from the run that I'd done the previous week. Obviously, I'd mentioned the previous week that I'd done eight miles continuous and I obviously didn't get that for this run. So I was a bit d disappointed in that. Um, just that the run this week wasn't as good as it was last week. I know and I've experienced it many times in the past that you always sort of have bad runs every now and again. So I am hoping that this week will be better. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed for that. But yeah, I just... After I'd finished the run and I'd sort of looked at the times and the paces and stuff that I'd done the run in, I was just really disappointed. I was really sort of fed up of being so slow, especially because I'm I'm the type of person that compares myself to my past self all the time. So I was just constantly sort of thinking back to the times I've run half marathons and things like that in the past. And 
I am considerably slower than I was back then and I sort of need to snap myself out of this headspace and just um, sort of be in the thought that it's finish line over finish time and it doesn't matter what time I do my first marathon in as long as I sort of get to the finish of it and that's sort of the end goal it's not about getting any sort of time so I do need to sort of remember that but at the time obviously I was ex exhausted I had sort of got myself into a bit of a state I rang my dad and I just I was just in a really negative headspace with it all and I just thought how why am I why am I running the London Marathon in the sort of fitness state that I was in um, and why to not wait until I'd sort of lost weight and everything like that to sort of give the first marathon a, a, a proper bash but there's sort of I had the opportunity with Crohn's and colitis to run the marathon it could be years and years before I get an actual ballot place for the London Marathon so I sort of had to take the opportunity while I had it um, but I am in a better headspace now, but at the time I was just really sort of down on it and I was down for the whole day really. Um, my dad sort of gave me a bit of a pep talk and that was nice obviously. I am running, for, uh, I'm running the London Marathon for Crohn's and obviously dad has Crohn's so I know that in the back of my mind I'm running for him and it's sort of in his, not memory because obviously it's still here but um yeah i'm running the London marathon for him so that should be my sort of main focus is to just get to the finish um but yeah it was just a shoddy run i'm just hoping that it's going to be better this week when i do my long run because i have 15 miles on the plan this uh this week and i'm hoping that it's just not going to be as awful as it was last week other than that uh in regards to the long run um still again on the day after uh, my long run I had sort of aches and pains in my legs but the day after the co the Corans is doing its job every single time uh, I will do a video uh, at some point in the near future on Corans to sort of talk about that because I've mentioned it a couple of times on my channel and you might be wondering what the hell I'm talking about so it might be a good idea for me to sort of talk about Corans and the benefits that it has and the benefits that I've seen personally uh, other than that, uh, chafing, I've not had any. I have started to use a new product. Uh, I was kindly gifted some samples and some like roll on things from Two Toms, which is this brand here. It's a sports shield. This is the For Her uh, version, but they do do uh, just a standard version as well that males can use. I don't know whether it's got anything sort of in it. Uh, that makes it a uh, her version but this has been working really well and I used it on my long run didn't have any issues on any of the problem areas that I've been having recently uh, I also uh, was in chats with Runderwear because I mentioned in my last video that I had quite badly chafed under my bum uh, with the Runderwear that I was wearing last time and I was sort of um, on my Instagram I was looking for other options for underwear because if underwear was chafing me like that I didn't think that buying a new pair would make any sort of difference but after speaking to them they sort of recommend going the next size up to sort of make sure that the seam was in the right place and it wasn't pulling anywhere and that seems to have done the trick. I had no chafing, no issues with the new underwear. It is actually better sort of, would you call it build quality? Um, basically better quality overall, the material is a lot softer and a lot stretchier and the seams are a bit better made than the previous versions that I was wearing. I've had my underwear for god knows how many years, like six, seven years now, so um, that was probably the, the reason why I was getting chafing in the first place. So I'm glad that I have now completely ironed out all the chafing issues because I was really worried that the London Marathon I'd end up with just chafing everywhere. Um, the main problem areas for me have been like under the sports bra band and where my shorts was which had gone anyway when I changed my shorts. Funnily enough I had all my new shorts in the wash and had to wear my old shorts and I didn't put the uh, chafe gel on my back and I've got chafing already so I know that the new shorts are doing the trick with that and my old shorts basically need to be thrown out and I need to get a couple of extra pairs to make sure that I don't sort of resort to those um, but yeah like I said I only did two runs this week so they are all the runs that I've done I just sort of need to 
get paces and times and things like that out of my mind and literally just focus on doing the distance for each of the runs that I've got planned for the weeks and hope that that does the trick and yeah just get to the finish line that is my goal for the London Marathon so hopefully I can keep that in my head it might be that I buy like a mantra bracelet or something like that or something like write something on my hand to sort of remind me of that fact that I shouldn't be caring about times and things like that at the moment so hopefully I will be able to figure something out with that regard but other than that I don't have anything else to say about this week just hoping uh, so far it, this week has been going alright I've done two runs so far so it has been going alright but the sort of main um, thing for this week is always the long run so I guess you'll find out next week when I recap week six so I'm going to end the video here before I talk anymore because I didn't realise it's been 16 minutes so I'm going to end the video here. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. You can always click the notification bell down below and be notified of when my videos go live. Other than that, I hope you all stay safe and well. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your week, weekend, whenever it is you're watching this. And I'll see you again in my next video. Bye.